So as a person who was a tiny little dictator, tiny little leader, who ran her own 60,000 person group with a bunch of moderators that did a Julius Caesar to me, <laughs> who then had people next to her, me, that I definitely imposed my way, absolutely. And when you have absolute power, you it does corrupt absolutely. Love and worship and hate definitely get people to move in specific directions. And is love or hate better? Here's the thing. When people love you so much, you can definitely manipulate them into doing whatever you want them to do. People hate you so much, well, <laughs> you could elicit a lot of things that are destructive. And so people that hate you so much could have the power to destroy you if given the opportunity. And people who, who love you so much, they have the power to destroy you. And so, you know, that, and if you love them, you have the power to destroy them. And that's the thing. Love and hate is a war of mutually assured destruction. And it happens in families, it happens in politics, it happens in religions, it happens in science, it happens in immunology. And those are also the blood types. Blood type A and B have a lot of war of mutually assured destruction within their blood type. And so that's probably also why those who are blood type A and B succumb to the COVID if they don't figure out something else to do or get treated. Okay. And so love and hate is a war that is not winnable. Love and hate is a war that is so destructive that even children are become casualties. And there's so much suffering with love and hate. So much suffering. I mean, you see the upsides of love, like Huey Lewis in the news, like, oh, the power of love, which, okay, but you see, love can be also very cruel. But yeah, love and hate is, is a weapon of war. And it is something that's so destructive that children are subjected to it. Animals are subject to that, to the destruction of love and hate. Men and women are subjected to love and hate and they die in that war. And so then there's this whole J world, my world, that understands the power of love and hate and how destructive it is. And it is a mutually assured destruction. And I'm stepping out of the war because I see both sides. I see both the love and the hate are so destructive that people don't survive. Their friends, their family, their positions of leadership, their, their politics, their religion, their science. And it only, they're, they're, Life is so temporary because they get drunk with power. I mean, look at Hitler. He got drunk with power of everyone hating him and loving him. Some people get drunk with power and they don't control that power and it becomes destructive and it'll cause society to go in chaos. And so when I posted that post about JFK. And we know the conspiracy world has used JFK as an example of the deep state destroying someone way back in the 1960s. Or the deeper state, right? <laughs> That's what I call the deeper state. Well, you only have one Jesus. You can't have another one. You're not supposed to. See, the system knew that religion, like Christianity, was a way to control people. Christianity, you keep think people in a moral infrastructure, um, developing a moral compass, which is why then the classrooms are going to have a Christian-based classroom with Ten Commandments and learning the Bible. And I understand that. And so you got, <laughs> I mean, I mean, I understand this is like, oh my God, this is crazy. And so, yeah, so we, we have to, ha so if we're going to have some kind of love 
worship-based situation, it must be through something like the moral compass channels of a Christianity platform with Judaism somewhere in the background regulating. And we have Jewish people who also live within a moral compass that look at the Ten Commandments every single day. So you have the, the Hebrews, you have the Christians, and the Catholics, and everybody else, <laughs> okay? But if you choose to have children, they have to have a moral compass. They have to have a moral compass. And if you want to funnel society through the family, regulated by the government, by the medical system, yeah, if the family lives by the Christian or Judeo-based morals and then funneled through the medical and holistic system, yeah, it's going to be a temporary existence, but it'll be a controlled and non-chaotic temporary existence. And then those who understand what the system is doing and they don't have um, animals and they don't have children and they're not taking care of dependents, then they're, they're, they're not subjected to some of the draconian ways to regulate families and people. And so essentially those that don't have any animals or children are essentially free. And those who choose to have animals and children and take on dependents, then you will be heavily regulated. And maybe your kids won't survive the regulations because the body was not equipped to deal with the society. And so, so then I fair, oh, so when I'm watching, when I'm looking at or reading Project 2025 and I see kind of what they're, what, what they're putting out there around the children between 18 and 25. When you, if you survive your childhood and you're 18 to 25, yeah, conscription. But if you, but that's only if you go to public school, right? So how are they going to, 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 to channel the children to give them a purpose? If you have money, you go to private school, you go to college or a trade school. If you don't have money and you go to then a public school, you'll learn the public school ways of doing things funneled into, you'll take the tests to see what your aptitudes are. And just like when I did the ASVAB and when I did the GED, my aptitude at first in the beginning was cooking and mortuary. And then on top of then, then when I retook the ASVAB after a few years of college, then I was able to get into something that I wanted to do was like be in the office. And so that's essentially what would be the future is that you will be test. You, you'll go through your private school or public school, but the public school, go into the military, take the ASVAB, then go to your technical trade school, tech, tech school, like I did in the air national guard and, and survive school. And then if there is a wartime situation, you could be shipped off to war. And that's how the system is going to utilize youth that don't really have a purpose. Because if parents have money, then they had all an obvious purpose. If you can't afford the tuition for, for private school, then your, your child will go into something that could be productive for society. And if your kid doesn't have money and they're poor, then they'll be shipped through, they'll be funneled through pro, for public school hopefully survive their peers and childhood and all their childhood diseases, and then eventually go into the military to be taught something. And I'm sure there's always an exception. If you have sicknesses or whatever else, well, I don't know how the system will deal with that because obviously the military will do um, a physical. I went through the physical in the military twice. And... <laughs> And yeah, it's a pretty thorough examination. They examine all orifices. It's, it's very invasive. But they want to make sure that you don't have any tumors and polyps and potential issues to interfere with your training and duties and all that. So, yeah, you know, and that's what I'm saying. If you can survive if you're in the J world because the only people in the J world that are about my age might have a fucking chance and maybe you don't have kids if you have kids I don't know if your kids are grown and you and you still have infrastructure to you and you can kind of move around and have wiggle room to change and all that and stay home and stay safe and eat food and all that then you might have a chance but these millennials 
You have a bunch of kids. Yeah, I don't know. I don't see them surviving all this. I hope they do, but there's no guarantee. No guarantee in anything, but at least you have a better chance not having children, not having pets, and not having to be accountable to your family who expect you to do A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. It's those that have finally set themselves free from the expectations of family and friends and social constructs that potentially have a chance. And so it took eight years to me to narrow down who possibly might have a chance in my world. But I'll tell you, those in, you know, that those that have families, those that are highly sexualized, those that have pets and are in high levels of government, well, you're going to have to play by their rules and you, and you will be a temporary person because their rules are pretty, astring, pretty stringent, rigid. You'll have to get treated for every single disease. So now you know why U.S. presidents only last 48 years and why you hated them at, at the end. I hated my parents for such a long time. And then, you know, then I'm like, then I saw the value on some end and went back with them for a minute. And then I hated them again. And I'm like, and so it was always back and forth, back love, well, love, respect, and hate, love, respect, and hate. And as the layers and layers of, of memories come up and I'm like, oh, I, you know, I had to get it off my chest. But then also, even though I had to feel a certain way, I also looked at the other side of why they, why they had to do what they did as scientists. And I understand that now at 50 years old, because if you love someone so much, you will lose all objectivity and you won't put boundaries on yourself and you won't put boundaries on your children. And so love is so destructive. And so, and you, so you see what happens with Christians, right? And with Catholics and those that have someone they worship, they kill for their religion, kill for their savior, and they go and hunt for a Satan. And that can be very dangerous when you have that kind of um, unrequited or unrequited, have that kind of... Um, boundless, boundaryless love for somebody. Okay. And so that's, you know, so in the J world, that's why I finally wheeled everyone down away from me. And I didn't want anyone to, to be next to me or worship or hate or try to convert. And so one of the ladies who gave me a clue on, and I, I still remember this day, Kelly Harris and her and I were kind of next to each other several years back early on in the J world and she had to relinquish. She had to actually step back from this world because it became something religious and she was so fucking right on. You know, when you have people worshiping you and loving you or hating you, it's a religion and it's a religion that you could actually do a lot of damage in and be and manipulate people into destruction or something else. And so she saw that coming from a mile away, she was so in tune. And so I remember to this day when she said, I got, I got to, I got to pull back Jillian. I got to pull back because I already have someone that I worship her Yeshua and all that. And I get it. And I completely understand she, she can't serve two masters, so to speak. And so you either, you know, keep yourself alive and you don't have people that you are ruling over or if you do have dependents and people that you're ruling over, then the government has to come in and regulate you and make sure you're not using your power for evil versus good. And that's a crazy fucking thing that, oh my God. And so now you know why the U.S. presidents only lasted 48 years and why you hated them at the end. They didn't want anyone to become that powerful that they used their power over you and turn it into a literal dictator that could manipulate you. But with this next regime... You're not going to like them. And that's intentional. And they will last a long time. That's the new world order. New world order is going to be daddy coming in, not mommy who's a pushover or vice versa. But daddy's going to fucking come in and lay down the goddamn law. As well as he should because you see what kind of chaos is out there. All these children running around with no purpose. Adults taking advantage of them. Adults using them for tools. For social capital, human trafficked, used, you know, used for whatever that family wants. And these poor kids don't have a fucking chance because there's nobody puts boundaries on them. They're being reproduced on bodies in deficit. And so they're suffering. They're feeling pain. I mean, I came to America 
when I was starving. I was so skinny. Remember, I've seen pictures. My mother told me you were so skinny. And we even thought you had autism too when you came into, into our world. And so she protein loaded me. She had Gerber pro, high protein cereal, McDonald's, French fries, and hamburgers, and anything she can get into me. That, and I would love bread and, and, and potatoes and starch and all that. And that's what helped me build up my infrastructure. And so from that, I still had stomach pains. I had neurological, you know, issues like having that, what they thought was a concussion. I mean, it was just such, I mean, she really had, she really, she really, she saved my life when you think about it. And if I did have any kind of autism in the beginning, it was kicked out and I had to feel the pain and suffering. Imagine when you are like biologically years behind your peers and then even intellectually, because you have to have infrastructure to you to be able to process information and have a stable background. I mean, you'll be sick. You'll be sick. Maybe you have behavioral issues. So you can only imagine those out there who are having children and they don't, and they have issues. Those children are, kind of, are going to come out with major deficiencies and they'll be suffering, like literally suffering. And so then these parents are, are like saying the food's poison. No, you had a child on top of a body in deficit that now can't really handle air, food, and water, can't handle evolution, can't handle the food supply, nothing. And then they're out there blaming people and they become so fucking predatory. And the parents are like, oh, I'm all God like everything else. And I'm going to go and find the Satan and be your savior. And so then parents turn into these despotic dictators that don't understand there's a bigger picture besides their views of that those governments going after them and the government's poisoning all their food and air and water. And so then we have the weak people out there destroying and starving themselves, starving the children, starving other people who are, who might have an issue, a little issue that they could potentially get over if they just ate meat, milk, cheese, and blew their nose and pooped and all that. But no, they surround themselves by people who are deficient and guess what? Birds of feather flock together. You know, what is it when you hang out with trash? You're going to smell? So I don't hang out with nobody. I have my husband. I can handle him. But I don't surround myself with people who are in self-destruct mode or who have a political viewpoint that's so destructive to themselves and everyone around them that then I eventually want to fall in line or be antagonized you know, subconsciously or, or, you know, consciously or whatever. So, you know, and, and that, and that's what goes on out there is you have all these deficient people who can't handle air, food, and water actively starving themselves. And it's not even like that was intentional. The government uses you guys to, to destroy each other. No, you did it to yourself because you thought that having families and children was the way to do things. And when someone said, Hey, maybe not, Maybe it's dangerous not only for the mother, but for those poor kids who are growing up so fucking deficient. And look what they're doing out there. They're running around telling everybody that air, food, and water is poison, and they're stealing stuff, and they can't handle they can't sit still, and they have ADD and ADHD, and they have to be drugged because they're deficient. And then you don't even know whether the chicken or the egg, which one came first, chicken or the egg? Well, if we hadn't had all these children develop from bodies in deficit because of so many factors that I mean, we wouldn't have all these drugs and operations and pharmaceuticals and herbs and extracts and detoxes and a million billion religions and all these gurus and shit that tell you, oh yeah, I have the next best thing to slice bread. So the fact that we breeding children who are so deficient is why we have the medical, holistic, energy, healing world, politics, religion, and science. If it wasn't for all your fucking children that don't, they can't handle air, food, and water, we wouldn't be where we are today with all these wars. And so, fine. The climate will change. The system will funnel your family into two perspective places. And if you came, if you came to this world in, with a silver spoon in your mouth, great. The system will find a place for you. Even being a socialite. And if you came to this world with no money, I gotta blow my nose. Then you'll be funneled through the military. Then you'll have to take an aptitude test. Uh -uh. 
Or you'll become somebody's sexual plaything, which is pretty much the future for a lot of these girls out there. There'll be somebody's sexual plaything, some uterus, or matched to some billionaire boy because she's hot and whatever, and the mother sold her into slavery. And that's kind of how what the what the the future for some of these girls are. Or they won't, or and boys, or they won't survive their childhood. They'll die suddenly. And so, yeah, right now, these kids that are between now and 18, they're going to grow up, maybe survive their childhood, and when they get to be 18, they might have to go and conscript themselves into the military. When they're going to high school, they'll be taking the ASVAB. I took the ASVAB twice. I retook the GED once. I passed, like, the first time, I think I failed the math section. And then the second time, I passed the math section. So I retook the one the areas that I that I that I failed in. But I didn't give up. But that's the thing is that if you don't have any money, the system is going to make you a resource. Gone are the days where you have a kid and they go work at a freaking deli or go work at a at a um, a gas station, and that's basically their only contribution. And maybe, and they, maybe they might, and they'll probably bring in immigrants to do all that stuff. And then the kids that are born into these families, and I don't know, we'll see, but you're seeing now the, the, the consolidation of these industries, restaurants are going out of business, businesses are going out of business. They're going to centralize all of your, your needs versus wants. And so if you have wants and you have money and it'll get sent to you through Amazon, it'll be assembled like in Mexico or India or somewhere else. Maybe not so much China in the future. And you'll get that sent to you through delivery services. And who knows how they'll they'll hire people for that. And then the uh, people that have families, the, yeah, they're, they're kids are going to be sent off into the military. Or they'll go to college. And so I, I see what they're doing. I, and I understand exactly what they're doing. And and I grew up like I'm. I my mother asked me one time a long time ago. She's like, "How do you know that? I mean, how do you know that I love you, Jillian?" I'm like, "I don't know. Could you do things for me?" I get. I mean, I don't know what the hell. I had I had you know a feeling of love and connection. I remember that powerful feeling of love and connection a long time ago. But in reality, yeah, when someone is so much about love, oh, it is a power. That is so destructive and it can be very destructive. And so, and so that is something that I even check myself with my husband. I don't want to take too much from him as far as immunologically. I'm not trying to, to use my husband to buy me all the shit that I don't need because I don't have any wants. I don't have any major desires. I don't, I'm not trying to collect baubles or gadgets or things. I keep, I keep everything funneled through food. I gotta pee. So yeah, I funnel everything through food, rest, and release. And I'm not trying to take on so many experiences because I've done that. I've already been down that road. <laughs> I've traveled a lot of places and I've seen a lot of things and I've experienced a lot of different people. And I'll tell you, not all of it was great, but it was an experience that I survived, thank gosh. But yeah, but with this next regime, regime <laughs> you're not going to like them. And I didn't like my parents for a long ass time because they weren't like other parents. And that's intentional. And they will last a long time because they are the new world order. And you will respect them or you will perish because you won't have any other choices. You had so many choices and they see what you do with your choices. 
pleasure and paradise and fucking everything to death, literally and figuratively. Okay? Just look at the influencers that are out, influencers that are out there teaching you how to pick up men and women and, and hawk to a, and, and all that shit, right? And so I'm going to tell you, both sides, Democrat and Republican, are not going to like the next people in office because they're going to fucking hammer down on both sides. And so you better prepare for it. No, they're not going to find the love within you because you've had used that love for evil, not for good. Now they're going to hammer down and you better be prepared. And so when my, when my mom said a long time ago that what she was doing is to show that she actually cared by putting boundaries on me, by not allowing my peers to influence me, by not allowing me to go and hang out at... Denny's or any other place where all my peers were hanging out or hanging out at their house and becoming a mean girl. You see how many mean girls are out there? Like Heathers. Remember that movie, Heathers? And then, of course, Mean Girls with Lindsay Lohan and other movies depicting women who get together and they become piranhas and they annihilate the weakest one. And that was the whole Mean Girls was they found, you saw what the strong one did in that group. They annihilate what who they think is the weakest person. And so the system got to see in all your families and friends and religions and whatever, how you interact with people. And yeah, people do annihilate the weakest one in their group. And so <laughs> that's some crazy shit. And so, yeah, my mom said, hey, you know. The fact that you're not being influenced by your peers is what's going to fucking save you. It's your peers who are going to destroy you. It's your peers who influence you to hurt yourself. It's your peers who don't have any fucking boundaries with themselves and each other. It's your peers that will destroy society. And so, remember, Project 2025 only affects those who have children families, and animals, and who are also dying from cancer, disease, chronic illness, and old age, or too much fertility. So again, if you're not bringing in a child that has to be reared a certain way into this world, if you're not taking in an animal that's going to have to be treated to fucking death, and you're not taking on dependents, like a foster kid, then yeah, the government's going to stay out of your business. And if you don't have cancer, disease, and chronic illness, and autoimmune disorders, and if you do, then if the system, if the environment is so aggressive, you'll just die suddenly. You won't even have the time to get treated. And that's kind of what's going on is that we have people who, you know, who, who are not like sick per se because they've had all the different cures or they've been avoiding foods. So they don't feel anything. And so they're all happy one day and all of a sudden they just drop dead. That's also what's going to happen. So you won't even see people getting treated for cancer. They won't have time to say, I have cancer and that's my identity. And look here, you know, what is it? Uh, a name beats cancer. Let's say, remember that 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 oh, that person, Chris beat cancer. You won't have time to be an influencer and say how you found a protocol that's going to help beat cancer. You're not going to have that. People are going to fucking drop dead before they even get to even identify with a diagnosis and make that who they are and their platform for fucking life. Right? <laughs> Literally, you're not going to have that. And so daddy's coming to town and he is not happy. And so I was a little irritated <laughs> by one of my Facebook friends. And I still totally like her, okay? I have no issue with her. But she comes off sometimes a little bit like off in left field. And I understand why, okay? I totally understand why. And I get it. And I still appreciate her because, you know, I'm telling my Facebook friends are fucking amazing. Because even though I may, I may irritate you and you might irritate me, it's sword, sharp, and sword, and we learn from the irritation, okay? We don't want to have an irritation that doesn't give us any kind of lesson, even to myself. We want to have a teachable moment, right? <laughs> but anyways, so the power of love, and, and that was, and I was thinking about JFK, and I was thinking about someone with Trump and everything, and how everyone loves Trump, and they worship him, and you're seeing, like even my husband is saying, oh, look, you know, Biden, you go to Biden rallies, hardly anyone's, there, hardly anyone's there, but you go to Trump rallies, oh my God, you're seeing the love, the adoration, the worship, and you're like, and I'm like, okay, well, that's kind of American politics is majority rules. It's the love and the worship and the hatred and the whole back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. 
But even more so now with the way the system has stepped up the deep state characteristics that piss off a base like Republican or Trump base. And then you're seeing even some of the Democrats switch over to Republican, right? So now you're seeing, okay, now you're seeing the, the aggressive worship. And the system has given you a reason to worship this guy. And so then you're like, oh my God, they're showing us what happens. Just like with Charles Manson, worshiping someone like Charles Manson, who was so charismatic. He felt the pain and suffering and he felt it. But he also used his, his power for evil. But he thought it was good. He thought he was saving the world by harming a CEO and someone like a Sharon Tate. And so it was like, oh my God. So he had a skewed sense of what good he was doing for the world. And so we're seeing that now. Okay. And we see people, you can see, I, when I'm reading some of these posts, when this, that thing happened to him, regardless if you think it's real or not, you can see some of these people in the anti-V world that I even circulated within and talked to the last eight years. And, and, and some, and it was on a public post and they're like, you mutter, mutterers, you did this. I mean, you hear the hate, you hear the aggressive hormone you hear the tone that is so deadly. If they were to get in front of a person that they thought represented the deep state or somebody, oh, they would have skewered them. If no one was around to see, they would have just, if they thought that this person represented something that they didn't like, they would absolutely hurt them. And that's what happens when you have somebody who is that fucking powerful that elicits so much love and so much hate. That's what happened with me. Okay? And then I had to learn both sides. Because why would why would I want to cultivate so much love and so much hate? Because both sides are freaking dangerous and it's and it's it's a power that that you could use to manipulate and destroy. You don't want that kind of power. It's a dangerous fucking power to have people love you and hate you. But those in government, especially in the American government, and they're like a Vance and Biden and a Trump. They have to be the figurehead, but there's always so many different things working in conjunction behind that person. You think, let's say, but why am I talking about Vance, not like Trump? Candace... Candace Owens, I watched one of her videos, a couple of her videos with my husband. And she was just like, well, can't, uh, Vance is a great, is a great choice for a vice president for Trump. He's assassination proof. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. Trump's passed on the baton, which then tells you something else is going on. Either something, I don't know. I'm not, I, I'm just saying that someone like a Vance, J.D. Vance, who doesn't have a lot of baggage, who's, he's a junior in Congress, okay? He just came to be a senator in 2023 or something, I think. You can read his background. Not a lot of baggage. He has an intact family. What do you mean intact? He has a couple kids. Looks great on paper. He may have been critical of Trump a few years ago. But like anything, if you want to evolve and survive, you have to flip-flop. Just like a fish out of water, flip-flopping to make sure he survives and gets to water or scare away predators, one of the two, or both. I've had to flip-flop and understand both sides. People thought I sold out. No. You, you have to understand both sides. Even those that hated me didn't like the fact that I even took their position and defended them. They're like, oh my God, I can't believe you couldn't stay within what you thought, whatever. And, and I got a lot of hate for them stepping to the other side and understand the other side. See, that's what's crazy about what's going on is that you people want you to take one side or the other. 
because that's where they find the power of manipulation and destruction is being biased. And so Vance doesn't have, I mean, he was critical of Trump, but then he said, then you can read or you can listen to some of the videos where he's like, well, I used to not like him, and now I like him. Uh, okay, whatever. But, uh, but he'll be the one to be the figurehead of the Heritage Foundation, Project 2025, and anything else, the New World Order is going to roll out that you know is going to happen because we've been in the conspiracy world. We know what the fuck's going to happen. We already have seen it. We've seen the indicators. We were told this. And, the re and then the thing with the AI, because you know people are going to die. you got to have some kind of automated system to do things for you because you can't. Because when you see two-thirds of the population going to be gone in the next five years, and that's a lot of boomers out there, you're going to want to have advanced technology to do things that that the boomers did for you or even the millennials who might be deteriorating too aggressive as well as a Gen X. And then uh, having children on um, bodies in deficit, you're going to need to have cyborgs. If you want to have a, f a bunch of freaking kids, they're going to be deficient in a lot of things because the mother is in deficit and the kids survived being in utero and even up to maybe when they're 18, but yet they have an issue, then they're going to be cyborgs. They're going to have machines hooked up to them. They're going to be have implants and transplants and all these things because life is, life is precious. As soon as a human develops consciousness and they're, you know, have issues, they'll be given ways to survive. And I'll tell you, in my world, yeah, someone that, <laughs> that is so deficient with all these implants and transplants and other developmental issues, trying to assimilate and also raise themselves to the level of the people around them who are giving them their microbes and their programming. It's painful. It's freaking painful. Trying to catch up to my peers was freaking painful intellectually, immunologically, even right now. Catching up to my husband. And now every day, even yesterday, I mean, I feel pain, yes. Not like aggressive pain, but it's a dull pain. But it's like right now, I feel the pain in my arms. It's manageable. Sometimes when I lay in bed, I don't feel any pain at all. This is great. But then it comes back again. But it's not like a bad pain. It's not like I want to go get treated. It's manageable. But it's there. It won't go away. And when, it, when, when will it go away if, if I'm not around people and if the climate calms down? But that's not going to happen for a while. The system is doing what it's doing. So I'm going to feel pain every single freaking day, but at least it's manageable. And then also I'm building myself up to the most strongest organism in my environment, which is my husband. And then if I outlive him, let's say hypothetically, then I'll be having to raise myself up to the level of the strongest person that I've been in contact with in the grocery store. Or the environment's going to bring in microbes that it's going to then take hold and force me to assimilate. Okay? <laughs> so it's flipping painful. Painful to, to raise yourself to the level of the strongest person in your environment. And so, so we're heading into that world... <sighs> where some people will be brought into this world at such a deficiency, they won't have what it takes to do what I'm doing. There's no fucking way. It'll be too painful. And so some of these kids don't have a chance because you're bringing a kid in this world who is so weak and so deficient and they can't eat certain foods because it's painful and they have to be treated, hooked up to machines every so often whenever the wind blows differently. But we've, we've cultivated that. We've, we have been so stubborn that we want a family. No, you don't need animals. No, you don't need children. I read somewhere somebody said something that I felt was a slam to me personally. I'm not going to say it to the person who was, of course. I'm like, yeah. And so I retorted back on my Facebook, you don't need a dog. You want a dog, but you don't need one. And you don't need a kid. You want one, but you don't need one. Because that kid is going to suffer growing up. And when you treat a child, 
continuously. Not only do they not feel pain at all, they will understand the power of that pain, but then they become inhumane. They become judge, jury, and executioner, especially when you bring in animals that die, that get treated to death and die. They'll lose their humanity. They'll become inhumane. They'll lack empathy. They'll lack awareness. And then they become a predator. You see, that once you feel pain in this world, your own pain, and you understand the power of your own pain, oh my God, you wouldn't want to bring an animal into this world. You wouldn't want to bring a child into this world. You wouldn't want to cultivate people around you who you know are going to fucking die and in agony. You'll be, you'll realize why the system is doing what it's doing. It's the people who bring in animals, who breed animals, and who have countless amounts of children that they really don't understand how to keep alive. And they become predatory, inhumane, lack empathy, and think the world owes them something. Of course, they can't evolve. They can't hear any new information. And so they just keep consuming. Just like a monster, right? You know, a monster will go and hunt for all the little humans. A monster like a giant, a cannibal, hunt for all the little humans. They don't care the pain of these humans. They don't care the pain of these animals. It's just consumption. Having a bunch of children, a bunch of consumption. Having a bunch of animals, consumption. Having a bunch of friends and family, consumption. All about love and happiness and love, 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 consumption. And they're like, oh, I'm kind. I'm benevolent. No, you're not, because if given a different situation, you would be so fucking evil. See, those that are like, I'm all about kindness and benevolence and love, yeah, until you get triggered, and then the fucking devil comes out. The de So kind and gentle people are someone you got to be really careful of, because underneath that facade is a war brewing underneath. They're trying to keep it all together. And the only way they can put out there that they're all together and, and, and whole is they put off an image. They act like they're human. They act like they're gentle and kind. They know how to act so well. They've been trained their whole life to put off an image. A false prophet, right? But now you're seeing there's cracks in the facade. And so that's why I stay away from most people out there. I stay away from group situations, those that have a bunch of kids, a bunch of animals, a bunch of friends and family. Because that's the illusion that people must keep intact for their survival. And someone like me, who's like, uh, <laughs> I see right through your bullshit. Oh, I threaten everything of what they stand for and believe in. Because God forbid, should someone actually say the emperor has no freaking clothes? So I just stay away from group situations. And so fine, if you want to be a god, you're going to have the government check your ass. And they'll check your kids. And they'll check your whole situation. They'll fucking watch you. And they should, because you see what happens when these kids get into a situation where that mother, foster mother, or that father either is so disengaged or wields their power to a point where these kids are being run on a, a treadmill for hours because the dad thinks he's too fat. So the kid's tortured by their own parents because the parents have this crazy ass way of viewing the world. And so they use their kid as a representation. So these poor children are run to death. They're told to, to, to perform at a drop of a dime. If they don't, and they start suffering, then they get treated to death until until they can't be treated anymore. And then they're gently, gently or violently put down. Why do you think that lady sat on that foster kid? He probably was whining. He probably had issues. I mean, he's a foster kid for a reason. The mother couldn't take care of him for whatever reason. The father wasn't around for whatever reason. And so the foster mother couldn't handle it. And so she suffocated him. She silenced his pain and suffering. That's what we're producing in this world. 
are children who will not have what it takes to deal with life. And then somebody has to silence them. And sometimes it's violently and sometimes it's humanely. Sometimes they just die suddenly. And so the power of love corrupts absolutely. If you can't even check your, your own self around the power of love, you will use that power for evil and not for good because you won't know your boundaries. And you will cross boundaries inevitably with people who love and worship you. And that's a dangerous fucking thing. And if you're all about love and everyone loving you, then you're the then you're also about manipulation. And that's why we can't have leaders that everyone loves so much because absolute power corrupts absolutely. I learned that term in the independent movement when I was in San Francisco. Somebody I knew at the time quoted that. And I remember because that's why they didn't like that's why they didn't like Democrat Republican. They wanted independent. But as soon as you become independent, there's leaders in the independent movement and absolute power. Right? And they're trying to join both the Democrat Republican, but it's still independent. But are you really independent? People still immunologically have biases. And those inevitably inevitably will come out in your beliefs. What's real independence when you don't have cancer, disease, chronic illness? You don't have children. You don't have animals. You're a self-regulating person, relatively self-sufficient. Work with your community as far as infrastructure and being a law-abiding citizen. Independent people don't take on an independent type of party because that's not then independent. You are feeding off the system, giving you money for being a political action community. You're not independent. Independent is someone who doesn't have animals and children who doesn't have cancer disease and chronic illness, who doesn't have vast amounts of desires, who isn't highly sexualized, who doesn't want for too much, and who can use their brain to understand all sides of the issue. That's independent. And it's not something you can find in a movement out there. It's something that is you dealing with. And you regulate yourself. Without suffering so much that you cause people to react. I've suffered the last three years. You saw my suffering. But I didn't make it so crazy that you're like, oh my God, you're going to go see a doctor. Oh, I said here, yeah, I have a major headache. Guess what I did? I ate steak. Oh, I might have put peppermint oil and water on a washcloth and try to like, you know, um, um, uh, distract myself. But I don't even do that anymore. I don't have any kind of essential oils. I don't even get headaches anymore. I don't. <laughs> what do I have? Arm pain. <laughs> and I couldn't tell you where that came from. Some people have leg pain. Some people have major back pain. Yeah, a lot of shit going on. All right. So, so yeah. Yeah. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. Which is probably why John F. Kennedy was assassinated. And you see what happens when people love Jesus so much. They will kill and die for him. And he has absolute power in Christianity. Just look at your Facebook at those who are like, oh gosh, Jesus. Whether they love him or hate him. It's either way. They are tied to him. Loving or hating him. So John F. Kennedy used his power of love over a lot of people, even women. And Jackie Onassis had to deal with it. She was the epitome of grace and beauty. And she had to endure being humiliated by her husband, stepping out on her time and time again. But she had a duty to her country to make it look like it was a powerful couple. Make it look like she had a powerful family. Everyone was, you know, doing the right thing. But in the background, JFK had medical issues, yes. But he also was hanging out with Marilyn Monroe and countless other women. Okay? And even RFK. And you can't have that. You can't have somebody saying one thing and doing another. And then also reveal potential trade secrets that, I don't know, it's still in question whether or not he said certain things. But I heard a speech that he spoke that Alex Jones put out there a while back. I don't know if it's available anymore. Talking about, you know, a deep state toward type of thing, I guess. <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember the, all the words. But I just remember the t the the... The premise of it was that there was an there's a there's an, a nefarious entity that is working in the background, so to speak. If I can paraphrase. All right. 
So you can blame it on Cuba, you can blame it on the mafia, you can blame it on whatever. But in reality, he was the example of someone who had a Jesus-like type of situation that became dangerous. Not even just to the deep state, but just dangerous all around. You see what happens, you saw what happened back in the Roman Empire if you read history. Julius Caesar and all the, the when you got cut out, right? <laughs> And that's what a cesarean section is. You're cutting out a baby. <sighs> With all the different Roman emperors. Absolute power just corrupt. Absolutely. And so America is the last greatest experiment. And we're seeing through presidencies, presidents, what happens. People love you and hate you. And so that's not sustainable. What what John F. Kennedy did. And that's not the message you want to send to people out there who watch you and worship you. If you're going to be a leader in any situation, you better fucking be intact and whole. And with a strong moral compass or else you will turn your society into freaking chaos. Okay, so Obama had a family. Has a family. You could say whatever about Michelle, but I'm sure she's... I don't know. Whatever. I'm not going there. Clinton had a family. Yes, he, his facade cracked. <laughs> there you have Monica Lewinsky. <laughs> oh, poor girl. <laughs> um, George Bush had a family. All these presidents had a family. Ronald Reagan, Jimmy Carter, and all, you know. And so when you cause chaos in your society because of lack of boundaries and a strong moral and lack strong moral compass, then people die in that infrastructure because the love corrupted them. But you have a strong moral compass, yes, and the love in that family corrupts you. So yeah. And so when you cause chaos in your country because of lack of boundaries and a strong moral compass, then people die in that infrastructure because the love corrupted them because they had so many children trying to stay cured. And they pass away from so much fertility called cancer disease and died suddenly. So that's the thing about the family. They could, it, it, well, yeah, the family can, can definitely destroy you. Some families might give you an opportunity to survive them if they allow you to finally separate yourself from expectations. But if you are responsible for so many people in your family, you'll be the human sacrifice and so will the people in your family because they'll carry on that same mentality of being the human sacrifice for somebody else. They become something somebody else has to take care of. But the person who's taking care of somebody must also know their boundaries and bring in the state to help them manage someone who is declining exponentially. Okay? So the family can make you or break you. But traditionally out there, especially in high levels of government, it'll be a traditional family and they will be put through the medical system for the most part. Because that's going to be the foundation of life and death and evolution. And then the people out there who will feel pain and suffering. And when the climate changes and when the society changes, they'll be able to change too. But those that are in high levels of government with a type of slave class, they're going to be looking towards the high levels of government and leaders, not someone like me. So not everybody can handle pain and suffering and evolve the way I've been evolving. Evolving. And you can't expect that. So you have to have a leadership like your government to be that representation of how people get funneled through a certain system. All right. So when people love anyone so much, they lose objectivity. When you want to be loved by everybody, you hope they lose objectivity. And then you can manipulate the F out of them who of people who love you so much and worship you. You can get them to do anything you want when you get a hold of someone with your love. And people take advantage of their power over others who don't understand the power of love, of how corruptive love truly is. And that's why you don't want everyone having children, because some people let the authority and their godlike status go to their head and it corrupts them. And then the children become predators and victims. You saw two examples on my Facebook of a man who was completely disengaged from his children and left them in a hot car. And this happened more often. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> Holy shit. And then a woman who let her power of her weight suffocate the power out of a young boy, her foster child. You can only imagine what the hell she was thinking. 
And sometimes these mothers love their children to death, literally to death. And that's why you want to have an intact family that is moral with values and a sound infrastructure and regulated by the government. If you choose not to have a family, great, awesome, and even better, no pets. But if you do choose to have a family and pets, then not only will the government regulate you, but the system will be regulated. So the system will regulate the environment. <laughs> and some people and animals will die from fertility. Okay? And so if you choose to have animals and children, okay. But with all this crazy climate change and the ULF influencing everything, you might have an animal, you might have a kid, but they may not even survive the environment. And so absolute power corrupts absolutely, and there is so much corruption in families who don't know how to control the power of oxytocin and love. Which is why women and teenage girls get damaged by the power of love. They discovered a power they can't control, or someone found their power and used it to their advantage. That's why it's dangerous to have children, because someone inevitably will take advantage of their ignorance and innocence. And the only way a woman could survive in this society is if she became a victim of something that hopefully she survives. And a lot of these women out there don't survive being a victim of their own powers while somebody else using her power for evil and not for good. So, yeah, I I'm thinking that, you know what, for any woman to survive in this society, she has to be a victim of somebody or something and be put through the fucking ringer. Can you imagine some of these girls out there and boys who hardly have any ounce of strength to, to, to defend themselves, get brutalized by their classmates, by their peers, by some stranger that they've walked in on because they didn't know what the world was like. Can you only imagine what these girls and boys go through? You really want to put your kids through that kind of situation when they're forced, if they survive their childhood and then they go into the military and now they're around peers who they have to immunologically assimilate to, but also physically assimilate to. And some of these, their peers are brutal and predatory, and they may not even survive boot camp. They may not even survive tech school. They may not even survive the war that they've been forced into if they're infantry. I mean, I could see them going into the Air Force, and maybe they have a better chance <clears throat> pushing a button somewhere behind a console. But when you're infantry, well, you might be strong enough to survive a war because you survived boot camp, but that doesn't always you know, happen. There's friendly fire. Accidents happen. Shit happens. And so it's almost like you have to be a victim in this society in order to survive your fucking society. Holy crap. So these, 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 these families have these kids, these illusions that the society is safe and everything is safe. They're going to have a wonderful life and, and be pleasure in paradise and, and jet off to foreign places and live you know, comfortably and this and that. If you're, if you're, if you're a guy, eh, you might have a chance to do that. But then inevitably, if you have deficiencies and you have children, you're seeing these guys, you're seeing these guys on the field and even in, you know, whatever they're doing, dying suddenly. See, when I was watching Candace Owens video with my husband and she was saying like, we need to have men be in men positions, male positions, right? Like secret service or firemen. Why are we having all these women doing all this stuff, right? And I'm thinking like, okay, I get her point because men are constructed differently. There's testosterone and all that adrenaline and everything it is a power. But then what is she not even considering? There are men out there on the football field in the law enforcement dropping like fucking flies, dropping dead. So that's why they're training women because eventually some of these men who have been procreated on so much and they have very little fat, but a lot of muscle. They're not surviving their job, their family, their friends, their lifestyle, their belief system, the sports that they're in, the athletics that they're in, the weightlifting. That's kind of crazy, isn't it? So yeah, we're going to have to employ women. And so, yeah, you know, so it's like you have to be strong enough to deal with your peers. And some of them are fucking predatory and mean. If you can't survive your peers, 
it's not going to matter what you do or do not do. And that's kind of the issue. So why would you want to have kids knowing they're going to be put through the fucking ringer? Immunologically, medically, their peers, even marrying her off. She's got to deal with her, a brutal husband, maybe. Deal with all that. What are you going to... She can marry a virgin, you can have this virgin get married, and you don't know what kind of sexual proclivities her new husband's going to be. And how many men must she go to to find the right Mr. Prince Charming in this society? So these poor girls and guys are in for some shit. And so if you are a new, a new couple, and you're wondering if you should have kids or not, I would say not. Because it'll be endless pain and suffering, especially in this world. And it ain't going to fucking end for a long ass time. But again, if people want to have kids, fine. And so that's why teenage girls and boys get human trafficked or they become teenage moms and you hope they survive being a mother and being a victim of their society who is all about love and corruption and sexuality. All right. So I'm not going to belabor the point of someone challenging me or telling me their opinion. I don't care. It doesn't matter. I put it on there. And so um, maybe the reason why JFK was assassinated because not only did he reveal trade secret speech to the public, but maybe because he was also stepping out on his wife with so many different people and most notably Marilyn Monroe. Okay? And so if you're going to lead a Christian value system, you better be morally morally intact and have a very strong moral compass and that's if you want to have a stable community and future because you have to be a representation to the next generation looking to look and act like their leadership i mean if you're gonna be judged during executioner which is why i said basically if you're if you are a mother and a father and an animal owner then you are judged during executioner but if you're going to be that, then it must be regulated by the government. And so, if so, I mean, if you if you if we are to be judged during execution, it must be channeled tightly within the family, feeding into a system such as the medical system, and then gently put down when, when all the conditions are right. If that's not the channels you want to go through, and you don't have any children. Or animals, then you be a good citizen and exemplify what it means to be someone. You either choose to be single, with a harem of women, men, or someone with a mar someone who is married to someone, and you both are self-regulating moral human beings. Whether you're gay or straight doesn't matter, or someone who can live on their own in a world of people and be a moral human being. And so we have all the so we have the best of all the different worlds without people coloring outside the lines, causing chaos. And so that's why the system, most likely, with Project 2025, is those who can afford private school will be fed into college system to keep the infrastructure going and to be a think tanks, or the other side will be fed into the military and fight for their place in this world if they survive. Most likely, if you survive your childhood, you might be able to survive the military if you're not thrown into war or survive your peers at basic training in tech school. When people love you so much, then you lose objectivity, and so you want to have a leader who the people don't don't know you and don't really like you, but maybe they respect you and they don't love you. That's why I don't want to be loved because that is a power. I had a taste of that and it it's corruptive. It is extremely corruptive. And so um, as far as, yeah. Okay, um, now you don't need a dog or a toddler to said that. Right, I'll just skip, I'll just paraphrase real quick through some of these posts because I already said some of this stuff. So animals and children are used as bargaining chips and leverage. Families can be leveraged, but they also can be a representation of something stable. And so it's a, it's a, it's a good thing for the system of infrastructure and even in corporations that you have a family because not only do you show that you are that you are stable and you have organization skills 
but you also most likely will stay with that company because you have mouths to feed. And then you also could be leveraged. <laughs> okay. And so I'm watching Suits <laughs> on Netflix. And so, yeah, it's kind of synchronicity because they have somebody coming into their office on Suits that's hammering down on some of their Wild Wild West activity. <laughs> it's the rule of law. Okay, so even lawyers have to have somebody keep them regulated because they can also have absolute power and fabricate evidence so they can win and all that stuff. Okay. And so you're seeing that, yeah, you know, some of these fathers are disengaged playing video games and forgetting their children hot cars. And some of these mothers, even foster mothers, are destroying the kids that are out of control and through inhumane means, like suffocating them. And no, you don't want to have, no, you don't need a dog or a child. So anyone says they need a dog or a child, no, you don't. You want one and then you become inhumane because in order for you to keep a dog or a child, you have to keep treating their disease. And then you become disposed. Then the people around you, the dogs and the children become disposable. Okay. And then of course, there's so many rabbit holes to go down, but you can read about the rabbit holes. I'm not going to go into them too deeply, too deeply. And so children start off as slaves. And so this quote, if you are ruled by mind, you are king, if by body, a slave. Children start off as slaves. And then maybe one day, if they have what it takes, they can free themselves and expand their mind if they can survive getting to be like my age. And so I posted a picture of uh, the dam failure in Nashville, Illinois. And then of course the doomsday maps of the billionaire bunkers. You're seeing some of this come, some of this stuff is coming to pass. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna go too much in all this conspiracy stuff about, whatever uh the devil is reality and the angel is a fantasy so when you're forced to be judged during executioner to your children animals and dependents eventually you will lose your humanity and you'll lose your objectivity because you will feel tremendous amounts of pain around your position to regulate the life in your body and your child's body and even in your pets and at some point that pain is too great and you have no choice but to become numb to it and then you have to become an amazing actor to give off like you are a human when really you've become inhumane because you're treating everything to death. And so then the devil is the reality, which is right now what's going on. And the angels, the fantasy of everyone, like just completely living in oblivion, not realizing that the world has changed. And so they're all like, oh, love and happiness and love, love, love. And so it's all angelic and beautiful and hearts and flowers and kisses and beauty and blah, 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 and then they die suddenly because reality kicked in. All right, so there you go. So I don't play, I play the reality and I give both sides of the fucking story and I'm pretty brutal in my truth, but I make sure that I add myself into the truth and if I'm condemning someone or a thought process or something, then I make sure I show you that I've also done it too. I'm not innocent of all that shit and I'm reflecting back. And so, yes, J.D. Vance is like a dark horse like Obama. And they both have a place. Okay, as far as the whole thing with autism, I kicked out. If I had any autism back when I was a kid, it was kicked out. And I had to deal with the pain and suffering. And so when you think about it, my mother actually kicked out the autism that I potentially could have sustained. So, yeah, autism is someone who is starving with neurological issues and they can't handle pain and suffering. But you can't make a kid suffer. They're only a scientist working with the medical system can go through that process. But you as a person who has an autistic kid, you can't force your kid to suffer. You can't make them eat things they don't want to eat. And if they've already seen violence playing video games, yeah, there's nothing you can do. You just watch it play out. And that's kind of what's going on up there is that we have people who develop relatively like kids on the spectrum who have a few screws loose and you can't do anything. If you're a doubt on the spectrum, maybe if you have a strong, a strong way to process information and you are okay with feeling pain and suffering, potentially you could kick out some of that 
stuff and you won't be on the spectrum, but I couldn't guarantee that. Anything's possible. But a kid who's autistic, yeah, they're it's whatever. You'd have to go through a program with the medical holistic system, medical system that will help deal with that torture of becoming whole again. And I don't know if the system will even will even develop an infrastructure around that. Maybe in places where you won't even know that people can kick out the autism if they're around scientists and government officials and all that. But the average person out there who develops a kid who has autism, yeah, you won't be able to kick that out. Maybe, maybe not. Who knows? I couldn't tell you. But you can't let a kid suffer. So there you go. And so I, that's all I'm going to say on that. It's very painful catching up. It's very painful. And so, yeah, flip-flopping is like when I was stemming as a kid. It's for survival. Vance is trying to make sure he survives. That's why he was tapped to be vice president, despite whatever he said about Trump. And there's a lot of tornadoes and everything else. More boys are born during times of war and stress, and no one knows why. Well, I know why. Because it's the Y antibodies. Antibodies. Chromosomes. The fight or flight. That's why when, when you when you war, you develop strong men and strong offspring, assuming they don't die. That's why they have to go keep, what is it, purifying the Petri dish. So people who will do whatever the system tells them to do, that includes becoming an asshole, chasing after the truth. All right. So uh, here's the thing. Regardless if it's real or fake out there, regardless of what you think is real or fake, have compassion for someone who's injured. I don't care if you think it's fake. I don't care if you think it's a crisis actor. Have freaking compassion for someone who is allegedly injured or died. Okay? So people, again, who've had issues with people who said they were vaccine injured. I, I And I've been insensitive, but I chose to play those sides, both sides. If you believe you're vaccine injured, then believe that Trump was injured. Okay? And it does not make sense to be cold and mocking and calculating unless that's who you truly are. And so even though the system may have had to contrive things, it brought out what people were already so if you are a cold, calculating, mocking, inhumane, lacking empathy, psychopathic, sociopathic person, the system will bring that out in you. And I already see it on my Facebook. Because Trump gets injured regardless of real or fake, and you're seeing people laugh at his situation. You're seeing people mock it and say it's fake and say he's this and he's that. Well, whatever. If you think he's MK Ultra, well then have pity that he was put through that kind of fucking torture. So the system is bringing out all types of people and that's why they do what they do. Because they want to know who the psychopathics are in our society. They want to know who the fucking bullies are. They want to know who, the, who those are who lack empathy. Who pretend to be all like, oh, I'm so kind and so loving and so benevolent. No, you're fucking not. Because you reverse the roles, you'll become the most evilest little person ever. And I've seen the facade crack of some of these so-called kind, loving people who will love your children. No, 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 no. Because you have already condemned and hate some stranger out there. You would not love somebody else's child. You would not love anyone unless they fit within your paradigm. And so, yeah, yeah. So the system is bringing up what people hide behind their images of love and kindness and happiness and blah, blah. And I'm glad they are doing that. So you see who people truly are. You want to know who the fuck you're living among. You don't want to, you're tired of all the fakery and the image. I'm tired of it. 
And then you know who you're dealing with and you don't get fooled. And then you can see when someone's like, oh, I'm all about love and kindness and here are all my animals and children. You're like, oh, I got to get the fuck away from these people. I got to get the fuck away from this group of people. I got to get the fuck away from this situation. Because it's only going to offer heartache and judgment and manipulation. So I stay on my own. I don't play no fucking games like that. I'm done. I've seen the I've seen the truth in people. I've seen it on not only personally, because I can also feel it in my gut, and the behaviors match the feelings. But I also see it on fucking Facebook too. And what you do on Facebook will translate what you do out there in the world. So when you cross boundaries and you're mean and bullying and and kind hearted like you say and but then you're gently correcting somebody you're out there in the public doing the same fucking shit manipulating everyone around you to get what you want you don't care if it's not going to be really good for them because you don't give a shit you get what you want so it's interesting when you read what people do on on facebook and you see what kind of persona they image they put out there You know, that's exactly what they're doing out there in the public. And then you don't want to be around anyone because you're tired, because the facade is cracking. And climate change and the politics and the religion and all that stuff is, is basically cracking the facade. And people are suffering because they can't uphold that image anymore of being balanced and beautiful and kind and, and peaceful. No. The banshee is coming out of them. The demonic banshee of manipulations coming out of them. And so then that's why they have to get treated to death. That's why they're under the influence. They got to keep it together. They got to hold that image together. And when you know this, then you don't want to hang out too many people. When you know this, you realize how dangerous your society is. And you understand why the system says stay home and stay safe. Wear a mask. Because someone inevitably will take issue with what you look like. Oh, you look like an immigrant. Oh, you look like Asian. Oh, you look, you know, this. I'm going to react to them and treat them in a specific way. See, the system understands the society they developed and the society that you bought into. Because they gave you every single one of your belief systems and ways to react. They gave you all the fake imagery and they gave you all the, the facades to hide behind. And then one day, they're going to bring up the reality of who you are. And some people recognize, some people have been trained to recognize the fake, the, 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 the destruction of love. So then when people say, oh, I'm about love, and they have love in their whole everything. <laughs> it's, like wearing, it's like wearing a tattoo with, 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 a, with a company name. And you're saying like, oh, these, 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 these people should have the names of the companies that sponsor them. Yeah. When you're putting out there all about love and happiness and animals and family, you're showing your cards left and right. And you're showing that, yeah, you have capability of putting off an image that isn't so. And when all the, when all the, when all the conditions are right, that facade will break down. And then the system has to change the climate and the weather and everything. Because they see what they have turned society into. And so that's why we are where we are. Okay? So, that's all I'm going to say for right now. But I knew that love, shit, the empaths, they may have felt stuff, yes. But the empaths also reenact what was done to them to cause them to be empathic. See, I can feel the pain and the suffering of animals and children out there. But I don't go and return the destruction of love and empathy and use that as a weapon in my arsenal to manipulate people. I feel the pain of what goes on. And I deal with it and then I just process it and I put it on my mind. And now when I 
wake up in the middle of the night and I go back to sleep listening to something, I don't have crazy dreams. I think the last dream I had a couple days ago was a futon, a red futon. I know red means fire and war, but futon? <laughs> There's going to be a war while I'm sleeping, probably with all this climate change stuff and the arms. But I don't have any crazy dreams lately. Okay? And so I'll deal with whatever pain and suffering out there that I see or I experience or I whatever. But it's not taking hold and becoming a resident in my body. I'm releasing the demons. So I don't become the very thing that I don't like, which is some manipulative love bomber who aims to, to insert themselves into things and destroy. And so if you want to improve yourself, learn how to talk on your own Facebook. And if you want to talk about things that I'm talking about, you don't need to parasite off of me and dispute what I'm saying. Go use your Facebook. Use your Facebook Live. Besides talking about all the, the, the superfluous bullshit of love and happiness and kindness. Why don't you face the devil of reality of what you've done to yourself, what you've done to society, what you've done to your kids. And be the fucking example of what not to do. And have some kind of contrition. But if not, if you don't have the capacity to have contrition or face your own fucking bullshit, then that's fine. Do what you do. Play your games. So there you go. Bye.